Hour two overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Thursday night or tonight, Pittsburgh at home against Tennessee. Here's our boy Luke Wilson in studio. There it is, a little <laughs> professional athlete salute. Noodles, you can get in on that. I know you feel excluded. Right. There it All is. Right. There it is. That's my guy. You're professional athletes. It is what it is. Well, what am yeah, I going to say? Thanks to the loser who wrote in the other night and said, you guys are retired. You're broadcasters. Now, thank you, buddy, for acknowledging <laughs> that. <laughs> Whoever, it's probably Hayes Burner account. That could have been. What did you guys say? I got to ask. I was driving in, you know, not to incriminate myself, but I was at a red light flipping through Twitter. Did something happen about a bike guy or cyclist on here? Yeah, see here, there's a, this is yeah. the bike guy. Uh-oh. Go Uh-oh. ahead, O. Speak your... What happened? Speak, well, <laughs> we're criticizing. Here it, here it is, buddy. <laughs> I saw a guy who was driving a bike that had an engine on it. Oh. Okay? I think once you put the engine on it, you lose the right to wear the tight shorts and the gear because you're not a cyclist. That's a great take. Do you confirm that? Confirm. Yeah, yes. that's and that's what we were saying. That's a hundred percenter. In fact, anyone who denies that has got some issues. I mean, right? You wear the tights for like aerodynamics, assuming that like you're tracking what you're doing. If you've got an engine on your bike, why yeah. does aerodynamics? You're matter? cheating. It's, it's like ridiculous. you're running a marathon and you jump in a cab for like you know ten miles. There's but no look, need. When for you're it. at that training facility, is there anyone who's like? Four bills with the tight gear on. Like you can't, <laughs> the gear is goofy, man. You got to admit, you so, got to wear it, but it's a good, it's goofy gear. The it's gear totally is unnecessary. goofy, and I think the strangest thing about the whole cyclist is how we think we're like part of the road. Like it's very strange. Really, that is oh, all yeah. very strange. Yeah. Incredibly actually. aggravating, yeah. actually. And I'll sit there and I'll be like, first and foremost, like if I'm going on the road, I will plan my route out so that I'm on either residentials or like roads that have bike paths or that aren't like slammed if that makes sense Mm -hmm. but the odd time i'll be like in a group and they're just ripping thinking that like oh no this is the law the car's got to do this and i'm like yeah even if it is if you get smoked by a car (laughs) yeah you know it it doesn't really matter what the law is you just got smoked by a car right like you're never gonna win that fight not that not that we're advocating for any violence on the road no one wants to see that but like drivers are not you're not programmed to think about bikers. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're just... And at times, they come zooming by. You're like, man, I wasn't even looking at you. It's, I did not even know you were there. It's insanity. And again, I, I ride quite a large amount on the road down. Like, let's say I'm coming up to a red light, and I'm like, okay, I got a little bike lane. The first thing I'm thinking of is none of these people know that I'm zipping by them. Mm-hmm. If the light turns green, I need to make sure no one's turning right. But all of a sudden, yes, it's like yeah. somebody gets smoked or gets hit, and they're like, they should have saw me. I'm like, no one on planet Earth looks, you know, that the way. Small exactly. The golden rule right. of a bike, whether it's a bicycle or motor bicycle, you have to assume they don't see you. Agreed. End of story. So yes. That's yeah. been the toughest part for Especially me. Especially on a right. You're, you're right about that. We that's... do a lot of dumb things as a group, and I'm just like, yeah. And people be like, oh, and again, if you're pulling up to a light, like, you're not in a training moment. Like, if you're really going to go out there and train for something, you're out in the middle of the sticks. Yesterday, I was in somewhere in between. I'm not even sure, but I think I was in Waterdown, Ontario. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no lights out there. No, God's That's country. a place to sit there and rip it. Yeah, exactly. Do you don't you rip do. it when you're in a in no. a city. Driving down Young Street or biking down it's you know, Avenue the, Road or something. The it's the ridiculous. The problem I have with bikes is, is they you know come to a red light, they feel like they can go through the red light. Like it's, it, you know, it's, uh, well, I'm on a bike, so I'm not going to do car rules, but then I'm going to do car rules when it fits for me. That's where I struggle with. I, I, as a group, Luke, like if you're driving, if so, if you guys are driving, like wh- what's your fastest? Are you 25, 30 kilometers an hour? Like are you getting, how fast do you, can you get if up If you're to? in a elite group and there's no wind, you're probably pushing 37, 38 kilometers an hour. That's an elite okay, group. So I would say that's be- well below the speed limit. Yes. So my point is, if do you get pissed if somebody gives you the horn? Because once in a while, I'll hand the horn out. Go get the hell out of the way. Because <laughs> no. if it's a single lane, and and you're like, there's a guy in jean shorts and on a bike in front of me, like use the side of the road, use this sidewalk, whatever. Hundred percent. But don't 
Don't ride down the middle of the road. The going only, 28 yeah. or 22. The only time I really get mad, and it's happened more here than anywhere, and I've actually gotten a couple altercations, which are nice, you know, because at the end of the day, I do enjoy confrontation. Sure. But uh, <laughs> I ride as close as I can to the side, and I usually ride by myself. So I'll be on Lakeshore, but like down in the Oakville area, almost Burlington. And at that part of Lakeshore, especially the times I ride, there's nobody on there. To avoid me might be the easiest thing on planet Earth. It's 11 o'clock on a Tuesday, Mm -hmm. okay, and I'm basically in a residential thing. I get annoyed when the cars buzz the hell out of me. So it's like I'm just riding along. There's no one in the other lane, and the guy just zips by me about a foot away. And I'm like, dude, you couldn't have swerved like a small amount? You know, just in case, hey, who knows? I hit something on the road and I end up yeah. like, not that I... And he sees you coming. That's yeah. when, like, when someone's driving towards the biker, then there is a responsibility to understand that. Go wide. Yeah. You have the ability but to go wide. Most of the time, yes. bikers are a fault. Okay, good. And they wear goofy gear. I mean, I... Yeah, that's fair. Like the tights, the helmets, <laughs> the cleats. Yeah. I'm going to end just, the biking discussion with this note. Whoever did that to Bloor Street from South Kingsway to... Maybe, I don't know, Dundas. Stop it. You made it. You screwed up Bloor Street. It's traffic. It's nuts. And it's a bike lane. Just take okay. the paint off of the road. Let's get there this in football. I think All we right, need a, uh, uh, the four of us need to go on a nice cycling trek. You one think day. so? Who yeah. do you think would survive? No. Like, who do you think would be. Partsy. Who do you think would be least likely to get to the finish line? Then you can only name one guy. You, the fraud. You think I'd yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'd be burning, man. I would be burning. You know the answer. We all know the answer. What's the answer? The answer is you, Beetlejuice. And it's always going to be you. <laughs> but I will pay to see that. I want to Fredo juice. All right, Thursday night or Saturday. What a week we got, man. It's like it's, the end, up, it's the end of Hayes and Co. It, it's probably it's not. It's probably not because this is around the time when I actually start taking this seriously and start picking winners. Hayes and, I and Co. On, is a fraud. I intend on doing it starting tonight, but this is not the marquee game. Like, this is a yeah, Thursday agreed. nighter. It's Pittsburgh, Tennessee, but we got some big games this weekend, including Philly at home against Dallas. And I'll mention that he thinks Micah Parsons has more pressure on him than anyone else on that Cowboy team because of what he said on his podcast, pumping the tires of the Eagles, claiming they're the best team, et cetera, et cetera. I counter by saying it's still Dak. Like for me, until for the rest of time, it's going to be Dak Prescott. Yet, Mike McCarthy keeps falling on the sword for Dak, trying to basically get people to leave him alone, saying there's too many critics of Dak and I've never seen anything like it. Um, where do you stand on that? Like, where, where does your focus go when you're teeing up a game? Dallas at Philly, the game of the week, in my opinion. So I think that both of you have, you know, both of those guys are in a tough spot. I think if you look at the matchup, Micah is in a tougher spot because he is playing a phenomenal offensive line that's also very, very good at the run game. And I think that's been one of the knocks on him this year is that he's not really good great or super stout against the run. Now, if this guy can pass rush, uh, to me right now, there's really nobody operating. Maybe Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, but those three are the top three pass rushers in the league. Uh, on the flip side, the F- Phillies' weakness is their secondary. So I do think Dak, yes, there's a ton of pressure on him, but if there's a game where it's like, hey, man, this guy doesn't really have to operate at a crazy high level to throw the ball around, that's kind of where my head goes. But on the side of, like, people need to get off Dak, I would disagree with that because there's been a lot of moments where you want Dak to really carry this team, Mm -hmm. and he hasn't really done that ever. And then on the flip side, he just seems to how he's on some of these bigger moments have that, like, crucial bad play. You know, this is one of those games where I think if you look at it and you're a Cowboys fan, it's going to be tough to win, but you really need turnovers. And defensively, they've been getting him this year. But on the flip side, if your defense gets three turnovers and Dak throws two picks, you know, then all of a sudden you're going to lose. Because if the Cowboys don't win the turnover margin, they will not win this game. And that's just the reality of the situation. Yeah, you look at, you know, what the best quarterbacks in the league are doing right now. It really feels like a, a separation. And Dak needs to figure out, like, which side of the table he sits at. Because I think Jalen Hurts is probably in, although he hasn't had a great year, he's had a good year. Yeah. He's had a good year. But he has proven, based on what he did a year ago, he is closer to Mahomes 
than he is the 32nd best quarterback in the league. And Dak needs to figure that out because like the way the, the game is played now with the rules being what they are, the cap system being what they are, like the Mahomes, Lawrence, Hurts, Burrow, like those guys are all winning ball games. For like sure. they're all going to the playoffs. And like the middle guys like Goff, like Dak, like they got to figure out who they are and what they're going to do because at some point it is going to turn into can you beat that guy? Yes. Like it's not just can you beat the defense. The other guy's cooking today. Can you keep up? Yeah. And like we saw with Purdy and Burrow, I think last week, where it was like he couldn't keep up. He could not keep up with Joe Burrow. And you look at Dak to in let's we talk about Mahomes, and obviously he's the guy. He's the main guy, face of the league, et cetera. But this year, Kansas City hasn't really played super well offensively. But somehow they've won a bunch of games, you know, because of Mahomes. And, like, how many times can you say that about Dak Prescott? You know, Dallas has not looked great, but Dak has carried them. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the frustration builds with Cowboy fans is it's like you're not going to get a Patrick Mahomes, but if you got somebody that is at least in that tier of quarterbacks, like you're saying, with the defense that they have, now all of a sudden you're an elite, elite contender. You're Mm -hmm. right there. You know, now all of a sudden when you're playing San Francisco, you're not getting blown out. Yeah, your defense had a bad night, but you got a guy that can run and gun with that team, which he hasn't shown consistently. So I, I do understand the frustration there with Cowboy fans. Do you think the NFL's regretting sending Kansas City and Miami to Germany? Like this should Why would be, they regret that? Shouldn't this be flexed to Sunday night? Like, shouldn't they fly home and play Sunday night? Like, this feels like this is maybe the game of the year. It's close to it, the way these two teams have played. Yeah. And it's at 930, on Sunday, which I think is actually going to be pretty cool. But if you're on the West Coast, like, you might miss this game. You get up at 8 o'clock in L.A., you might miss – you're going to miss half the game. Yeah, I, I do think they regret some of that. But on the flip side, I don't know what the plan is with good old Roger Goodell. But you're basically saying, hey, we're, we're taking uh, the potential game of the year – in putting it in Europe, whoever's running that NFL Europe office is ecstatic. Yeah, like they look at what you got. You got yeah. Lawrence back to back, Josh Allen over there, and Patrick Mahomes. Yes. Like you weren't here when the Bills came to Toronto, but A, the Bills weren't a very good team. And they didn't, I don't remember them playing teams of substance. Like they weren't wasting big games no. on the Rogers Center in Toronto. It was like a throwaway, we'll take your money. You know, some teams got to come up there, we'll play them, and we're going home. But now Europe is like, now the Jags used to be a joke. They're not anymore because of who they picked, because of their quarterback, because of their coach, and they got talent now. But Josh Allen going over there, Miami, Kansas City going over to Europe, like that's a big commitment, man. That's them sending, like the NFL, to your point, they're saying we're in, man. Like we yeah. want Europe to appreciate what we're all about. I do think, too, as it's annoying as it's been, but that's been a huge point for them is trying to develop the game in that sense. And you're seeing that a lot with this flag football thing as well, which I think is They're outrageous. promoting it heavily yes. during games, like Peyton Crazy. Manning, Roger Stop Goodell. It. Stop it. Yeah, like... It, it's yeah. It's, in me, 20, it's, silly. it's in 2028, isn't it? It's in 2028. It? So that's the next thing is like, oh, are these NFL... I'm like, <laughs> who cares? Guys, there's, it's five years away. And then, again, fast forward on this thing, but you're seeing Aaron Rodgers obviously was kind of a weird twist up. Kirk Cousins was a complete non-contact. Mm-hmm. It's not common, but there's a lot of non-contact injuries that happen in this league. You tell me that these guys or these NFL teams are going to be like, hey, man, you can go out there to, is it in L.A., I believe, 2028? Yes. Let's just be completely honest of what's going to happen in 2028 if you send the NFL, the best of the NFL there. They're going to get to town. They're going to show up at the nice guy, great little lounge. They're going to end up at Delilah's. They're going to party all night. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an absolute blast. They're going to show up and play God knows who, win by 40. But now you've got a wildly hungover football team that's the talk of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And someone's going to get hurt doing nothing. Yeah, someone's. you're right. Someone's going to blow up their ACL. And Yes. And then the next thing is, let's not forget that outside of a couple quarterbacks, very, very few people in this league have guaranteed contracts. So like, if I'm one of these guys, like, yeah, I want to go to the Olympics. Yeah, it's fun to say right now until all of a sudden you're like, wait, I'm in a contract year. God forbid something happens here. Or God forbid I'm playing a team that 
also doesn't really know how to play football. Crazy stuff. You know, and I'm not I'm yeah. sure it's probably similar in hockey. It's like, hey, if I'm in the show and I go to some beer league thing, you know, and it's getting competitive, which the Olympics will be, you almost run the risk of someone like, hey, this guy's not really a hockey player, makes a move I wasn't expecting, mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden I'm hurt. Or risking embarrassment if somehow you lose to, like, New Zealand at yeah. flag football. Like, how <laughs> would you possibly explain that? That's a great – the it's one thing I will say, here. though, is Canada's got to be in line for medal for that battle. Yes, it's got to be, be mandatory. We should probably, be pretty stout. Yeah, aiming for silver maybe, but yeah. it should be absolute mandatory medal. Again, I like the idea of flag football, and I don't. I want to be very clear about that, but, like, the idea of the best players yeah. in the NFL going no. is insane to me. Okay. I'm with you. Partsy, have you wrapped your head around – Mike McDaniel had his – was it yesterday he had his presser haze mm-hmm. where he just wheeled out there <laughs> – and he's such a small dude, and he's got the shades and that little track suit on. Like, I just wonder how the dynamic. You've been inside that locker room with gigantor men who are manly men, and it's just I can't imagine that guy getting everyone's attention and them taking it seriously. Like, how does that dynamic work with that coach? So it's funny you say that, O-Dog, but I think he plays it perfect because he's funny. The worst thing that ever happens is when there's that guy who then comes in and tries to be a raw, raw, like, hey, I know what it's like. It's like, no, you don't. You have no idea what it's like. But doesn't he have to do that at some point? No. Never? No. Like, they're at the Super Bowl at halftime. They're losing by 21. He doesn't have to come in and kick a Gatorade bottle I'm or something? Sh- yeah, he'll- but he'll break his foot and they'll laugh <laughs> yeah, at it. Exactly, though. <laughs> he has, I'm sure he has people on the staff that kind of, have that energy and if he's smart like I'm not in the locker room but he will have guys that are on the team that can fill that void like I tell people this all the time my rookie year when we won the whole thing one of the most important guys on our team was a defensive lineman named Red Bryant he wasn't a household name you know he wasn't in the Legion of Boom made a ton of plays for us and was a phenomenal football player but he gave every pregame speech gave a lot of the Saturday night talks he was the old veteran of the team and also the raw, raw guy. Where Pete is definitely a raw, raw guy, but he's not like a in your face. He's a G Shucks raw, raw. Yes. Hey, you're the best. Let's get going. Like, yes. Let's get him. So now all of a sudden it was like you could get guys to fill that role. And as we got older and we had to pay our younger guys, we lost Red Bryant. We lost a guy named Brandon Meebane. Max Unger, we traded away. And I did feel like over the next five or six years, That was a major void Mm -hmm. in our team. So Miami's got to have that is what you're saying. It probably is there. It just, I don't know. It just seems like something would pop up. Some guy, you know, gets arrested or something where it's like, this guy's got to put on a different face, Mike McDaniels. And I can't see it. Like I can't, you know what I mean? I can't picture like a different disposition from this guy where he's just like so angry about something. Yeah, it would just seem so contrived. Or having a discipline like some yeah. monster player, where it's like, I need to see you in my office. I'd be like, Who the hell are you kidding, man? I'm not going in your office. <laughs> that is always a strange one. <laughs> it's a very strange one in this league when you're like, and I even felt like that with Pete sometimes, where it was like, we didn't really. He wasn't the most disciplinary style coach, mm-hmm. and I always wondered like, he everything was so happy and so positive. I would have loved to be in one of those meetings where he was suspending somebody or, you know, fining them, which I don't think he ever did consistently. But it would seem just like so off brand that it would be hard to take. So I could see that happening with Mike McDaniels a little bit. Sure. But it's much better than, and I know they're doing all right, but I remember, is it Gannon in Arizona and some of the clips you saw when he's like, but then the one he's like, who rode the bus here today? Yeah. Like, I'm here. What do you say? Like, I want killers. Yeah. Yeah. He started to try to change. It felt like a different demeanor. And it was like, like, that's not you, dude. What again? Like, yeah, it just seems so far like out of touch when it's like you didn't grow up in the neighborhoods that the majority of these guys grew up in. You have not played at the level. You don't have the pressures that a lot of the guys in this locker room have like stop. Like Joe be Judge the nerd. showed up with the Giants a couple of years ago, and he tried to be a hero his first training camp, and yes. they were like, "Get yeah, out of my face!" Yeah. <laughs> yes. Immediately, well, it's ridiculous. We were talking about the Belichick 
coaching tree. It feels like it's rotted now. Gone now. Let's it's go. Done. I didn't feel like it's done. Like I McDaniel, hope so. Like Josh McDaniels. That's got to be hope it. So. I, I like, hope so. Who else is going to get wow. one? The rumor there's. Yeah, th I I would be shocked at this one, but there's rumors floating around that Patricia might end up in uh, L. A. for the Chargers. As what? what? Wow. I mean, a water boy. I, I hope so. That's like Peter Shirelli going to Edmonton or going to Yeah, but Ottawa why wouldn't somebody GM. this is what I don't get. <laughs> Place a call to people in Detroit like yourself and yes. say what was the Patricia experiment like and you will tell them. It these was, people are correct. so dumb. Uh, that's where I get confused on like how do these coaches get recycled? No kidding. What did they do in the last spot yes. that needs someone else to hire them? Are you crazy? Oh, dog, that's exactly. And I always wonder that. Like, if it didn't work out there, what makes you think that right. him coming here, like, what was the difference between Detroit and the Chargers? That's like, oh, we're going to fill in the gap so this guy can. And then the strange thing is, it's like the next year he goes to New England and is awful as their OC. And now he's a defensive coach. A quality guy in Philadelphia, and somehow Philadelphia's defense, specifically their pass defense, is atrocious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like this guy's anywhere, anything he's touching post New England is not just bad, it's literally deteriorating in front of your own eyes. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure yeah. how that's even like his name's even floating around for anything. Insane. Talk dude. about masses. What do you what do you make of Las Vegas and what do you think is going to happen there? They'll probably be a lot better. You know, Noodles, I, I so? was, and I mean this, I, when I watched Monday night, that was, when I was on Jay afterwards and I said, I'll be a funny, but I was disgusted. I said, I was in, watching Vegas play offensive football made me embarrassed that I was even in the NFL. Like there were so many bad, bad football things happening that it was jaw dropping. Prime example to me, and it happened, I want to say two or three times. But Anzalone is coming right up the middle of the offensive line on some on some blitzes or some pressures, untouched. Yeah. They're and again, like you might think if you're a fan, like oh, they tricked him there. You don't trick anyone by bringing your middle backer or your inside backer, whether it's the Mike or the Will, or if it's base of Sam, whatever. And it's like that's on preparation and being able to call out. You hear the quarterbacks being like, "We're gonna mic over here. Everybody should know. Okay, if we're micing over there." then someone either is blocking him or Jimmy G knows he's hot off of this unblocked rusher. Jack Campbell, the one, I believe it ended up being a 15-yard uh, penalty in the end zone. These are like day one protection rules that somehow week eight in the year, you can't get it done. Devontae Adams, I don't want to hear any of this nonsense that he's lost a step or he's getting older. It's ridiculous. I mean, he has one catch for 11 yards he should have had a 99-yard touchdown, yeah. and then the next drive should have had a 65 or whatever the thing was touchdown. The guys should be in the conversation for top five receivers in the NFL. Instead, he's not even the conversation for top 20 right now. So I, I honestly believe that they will be much better. I'm not saying good, but a much better team next week. They can't be worse. I mean, somehow they can't run the ball anymore. Jimmy G looked awful. They can't protect. I mean, it, they're benching Garoppolo. Yeah, which I, I find. I don't know. I mean, that seems kind of. I'm not going to say unfair. It's pro sports, and Garoppolo has not been good. But you just mentioned if he can't get protection, and Josh McDaniels has no idea what he's doing. You've invested in Garoppolo. He's there now. You're going to play some guy no one's heard of before, and I'm sure he looked good in camp, and he's looked good, maybe getting some snaps in practice, but. Like this, it feels like a tank, basically. They're just going to try to tank out and, and move in a different direction. It does. I have a theory, complete conspiracy theory here, so I have no backing for this. But uh, Okay. You so like those? Marcel Reese is a – I don't know if you remember Marcel Reese. He played fullback for Oakland, now Las Vegas, for a long time. His last year was in Seattle. And I remember asking him, you know, he was a guy that I liked watching when I was younger. And I said to him, uh, what's, you know, Al Davis like? And he said, Al Davis is one of the few guys in the league that views everything a little differently as an owner. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? He goes, he would consistently come in the locker room after game. Marcel was Pro Bowl guy year in, year out. And be like, Marcel, come talk to me. And be like, man, one thing I know about this game is these coaches are a dime a dozen. Players win you the game. And I'm like, you do not hear, like, in today's game, it's a lot. We need the good coaches, mm -hmm. and then the players will get, you know, secondly. 
So I have a feeling that at this point, Mark Davis went in there and was like, this is awful. Probably went to Devontae Adams or someone else and was like, you're the best player on our team. What do you think we should do? That's my theory right now. And next mm. thing you know, it's like GM's gone. Like, hey, Jimmy G's yeah. not getting it done. It's Let possible. Let throw it out. I and, think he just wanted people to stop bothering him. Like, you saw that clip of Mark Davis sitting at the stadium in Vegas and fans are walking by yeah. him saying, fire McDaniels, fire McDaniels, and he's snapping on him. And, what about yeah. the one tweet today that said Jim Gray is one of his senior advisors? The Jim broadcaster? Ray? <laughs> Brady's <Google> guy? <laughs> That's concerning. Jim Gray, I read it, and I saw the picture of the two of them together. Jim Gray is one of, what's his name? Yeah, it, Mark Davis. Mark Davis's senior advisors, That's, as far as wow. anything. Dude, I was like, oh, God. That explains yeah. a lot, man. Like, I, I don't think Davis has a clue what he's doing. No. I, I think that's pretty clear cut. Like, it starts at the top, and the Raiders are a mess as long as he's going to be the owner. Yes. But, I mean, it was very strange in my short time there when they were still in Oakland. It did seem like a complete madhouse. I mean, I was there for the Antonio Brown saga. Yes. And that was Gruden oh at that point, right? God. And it was outrageous. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was funny. It was very funny. But So it were was you there outrageous. when he came in on the air balloon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What the hell was that? The what? The air what? He, he, he came, came in on an air balloon. On, a, on like a, a, what do you call them? The a hot, hot air balloon. balloon. Hot air balloon. Yeah, hot air balloon. <laughs> in a basket. An air balloon. <laughs> <laughs> he came in on an air balloon. Yes. I mean, the story, it was like every day with that whole camp. We were on hard knocks. So that made it even stranger. But um, I just remember sitting there and being like, man, you hear all this stuff about AB and blah, blah, blah. Gruden loved him. And he shows up day one on an air balloon. I'm like, man, you come in an air balloon. Like, this guy's about to, like, ball out. You can't, you like, better. show up yeah. to but Napa Valley. What the Valley. hell was his problem? Like, what, what was the problem? I don't know if anyone truly knew, oh, dog. It, out of nowhere, you'd hear, like, different rumors but the one thing that was strange was you kept hearing that it was over. So at one point it was like, hey, he got frostbite on his toe or his foot from like a cryo chamber. And you're like, okay. Again, but the strange thing was you never saw him. There's the air balloon. Here we go. We got the air balloons ripping. Look at this. <laughs> yes. this guy showing up at day one of camp in a hot air balloon. Yes, I was here for all this. So again, <laughs> Like so it, my guys so to Napa Valley, we would ha we had camp in Napa. Yeah, like you do this right here, you you got to come prep to ball out. So was the Hard Knocks camera on there with them? I think so. Like that's obviously how it got taped. Like that wasn't his own production team. Like HBO's like this is amazing. This yeah. cat just called us and said he's gonna fly in on a hot air balloon and he's got frostbite <laughs> on his feet. Yeah, I mean... Like, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Right and then when the frostbite was fixed, they're like, oh, because we were excited, right? This guy's, a, you know, the man. They're like, hey, he's coming back. We're going to have, uh, like, A.B. at practice mm -hmm. today. Gruden would literally set every play up for A.B. And then all of a sudden, it's like, hey, he's not wearing the helmet. His helmet's now been banned. Right. So he's not practicing. Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. remember like, that. Remember so that. Like, yeah, he, he wouldn't accept the new so helmet rules. Like, fast forward, a couple weeks later, it's like, hey, he's decided to change helmets. So it'll be a practice today. And I'll never forget this as long as I live, man. We're at practice, and because he hasn't practiced, they have him on a bit of a pitch count. So they've got this strength coach who's a great dude. Everybody loved him. And his job is literally to count AB's plays in practice. So we go out there. And every time A.B. was in, Gruden made sure that the ball was thrown to him. He's like, I got to see what this guy's all about. I got to get Carr focused on him. So, like, A.B.'s in there. He Ball's going A.B. He's on a pitch count. This man, A.B., shows up. First, a legit practice. I'd never seen anything like it. Everyone knew the ball was going to him. He catches every single ball, ripping up the field, sprinting all over the place. I mean, it was electric. The guy was incredible. And everybody's all excited. Like, man, we have this. Like, this guy wins you games. Out of nowhere, he's probably in like 12, 14 plays. He just starts screaming, where's the strength coach at? I'm like, what? <laughs> Rips this guy a new one, and he's like, you're supposed to keep me on a pitch count. You're about to get me hurt. I get hurt out here. You're going to be fired. And the strength coach is like, dude, what? <laughs> Looks, and it's like, you've been in 12 of your, like, let's see, at 19. Like, yeah. 
It's like you haven't even hit your number yet. You're about just past half, AB. I'm keeping count. And he just storms off. And I'm, and that was kind of him, where it went from like one moment of ripping around, having the time of his life, for no reason, just walking off, ripping a strength coach a new one, yeah. and then turn around and find something else. Insanity. Uh, he made a bunch of money, but he left so much money oh, out there. He'll, yeah. he'll Millions. be yes. sitting in retirement thinking. We never saw him again. Yeah, that was no, it, man. It was, that it was, was a it. gong show. From then he had, I don't know where, he went, well, to, he went Tampa. to Tampa. He went to Tampa, right? And yeah. Brady brought a, him in, then the Jets. He won a Remember World he championship retired? in Tampa. He did. Yeah. And, and then, then he, then he had to storm off the field. Stormed yeah, off in New York. That was it. He said, I'm out. He took his gear off and started walking out. Retired. Bonkers. Never saw him play again. Bonkers. Insanity. Out of all of this, though, out of all of this, the frostbite on the feet are the, is the most ridiculous <laughs> thing. Yeah. August <laughs> ever heard. Area. Noodles, the other one, and I know you can appreciate this, but imagine they come out to you, Noodles, you're playing hockey, and they're like, hey, your goalie mask is deemed no longer safe. And they literally come up to you and say, here is every single helmet known to mankind that is safe. We will get you anything legit. I mean, some of the new helmets, don't, when I was leaving, they would molt, like take a 3D scan of your head, okay? And that would be your helmet, and you'd have your own <laughs> signature in there. Be like, Noodles, man, take a pick. What do you want for your helmet? Imagine you being like, I want my old helmet, and I'm not practicing until I can get it. And then leaving the facility. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's absurd. It's just the I would have thing that, ever. dude. If I was an executive, I would. As soon as that happened, it's like you're cut. I'm not doing this. I'm not dealing with <laughs> but this they person. Over traded a for him, right? They took I on the Gong yeah. Show and Pitt. Gruden yeah. loved them. Gruden needed him. I know, but Mark Hayes, Davis. that's a sign when someone says yeah. that with their helmet. It's a sign of things to come. That's you right. Got to cut bait. No, yeah. it was. It was an absolute sign. It was. It, we knew exactly what was coming, and now we can look back on it. We're like, it was the start of the end. Yeah, for him. But desperate teams do desperate things. The Browns, yeah. the Raiders, you know, that's what they do. Yeah. And that's what they will continue to do. Speaking of desperate teams. Here we go. With Hayes and Cole. Tonight. All right. The number. We're plus seven now. <laughs> plus this seven. could be it. Yeah, this could get us a plus double digits no, this weekend. Won't happen. I told oh. you. I, by, by oh, Monday dog, I'm fired up. By Monday night, post Monday nighter, this is a three point spread. This could three be a spread. six point swing this weekend. It won't be because A, I'm winning tonight because no Pittsburgh. Way. At home against Tennessee, the line is up to three, right, Doogie? It was, it was, it opened at two and a half. It's been two and really? a half all week. Money's coming in on Pitt, and I'm going to continue to push money in that direction. Vegas will push this. Vandal will push this in Pittsburgh's direction because I'm going to take the Steelers. I'm oh, play the points with Pittsburgh. All right, Tennessee's not a very wow. good team. I, I, Hen Derek Henry's been really good this year, really good. And this How Levis do you kid. Follow that comment up with the selection, like because I'm going to explain it. It's a short week, though, and Pittsburgh might have the best front seven in football. I think T.J. Watt is going to be electric tonight. This reminds me of my boy Pageant or whatever the hell his name was in Chicago. <laughs> first, first week we saw Levis, he looked.